Welcome to Azerbaijan. The 43rd World Heritage Committee was held here, and over the course of 10 days, UNESCO worked on an inventory of protected sites and decided on some new nominations. We are in the old city of Baku, with its narrow streets, the Shivanshah Palace, and the Maiden Tower from the 12th century, all classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But what are the criteria that must be followed to be part of the list? More than 2,500 delegates, committee members and experts took part in this annual forum, but who can apply for their site to be included? The World Heritage Convention is a legal instrument which is signed by 193 countries. So it's only a state party to the convention which can present a nomination. But in some cases, local communities, NGOs and associations, they push for uh, a site to be nominated. So uh, civil society is also involved. The most important criterion is that a site needs to be of outstanding universal value. This year, 29 new sites from an original 37 were added to the list because of their cultural characteristics and unique quality. Among them is Babylon, now in modern-day Iraq, once one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Being included has its advantages, tourism, world-renown, but also they carry obligations for the countries they're in. We have to follow all the recommendations of the international community to improve the situation, to make it more protective and to ensure that the government, the state itself, the state party, whatever country it's representing, are doing their best to protect the heritage which they want to be inscribed. On the sites, it falls to site managers to make sure things get done. Pascal Tarovinga is in charge of Robben Island, a listed historical and natural site in South Africa. Today, he's touring Gobostan on the Caspian Sea with its 6,000 engravings, some dating back to prehistoric times. One of Pascal's challenges is to protect Robben Island from climate change. Being an island, we also affected by the impact of climate change. Uh, remember, we have got uh, uh, an ecological system that supports the island. Any gradual changes will affect the habitats. It will affect the wild animals that we have on the island. It affects the buildings. We, we have to do maintenance more often than, than, uh, than other sites, and that's very expensive. Climate change is a factor, but also any development plans or armed conflicts, as here in Sana'a, the capital of Yemen. All these factors can lead to a site being in danger. This year, the UNESCO committee identified 53 sites in danger. Being on the list may seem daunting, but it works well, according to UNESCO. The danger list was included in the World Heritage Convention as a tool to help those countries to obtain more international funding, more awareness about the threats to the site. So it's actually help and support for the site instead of a misconception that this is a blacklist. We have a specific course called First Aid uh, for Cultural Heritage in Times of Crisis. So this is actually to build up the capacity of site managers on how they should respond to uh, these kind of threats when they happen. There are now more than a thousand sites in UNESCO's World Heritage List.